There was another place that uh, many non-Aboriginal people went, as well as, as us Aboriginal kids or Noongar kids, was a place further back up the river near the old hospital and, and further back from that, and that place we called the Sandy. I distinctly remember that we were not allowed to swim over to the old bridge and, and past it. And that, that was for all of us Noongar kids. We all knew that. There were some times I, I remember a younger cousin swimming around and not taking much note or notice of where they were and going too close, too close to the opposite side of the river and past or, or near the bridge. And uh, his older sister swam out, grabbed him and brought him back. And uh, he really got into a lot of trouble. And I remember feeling, feeling uh, my, my older cousin, his sister, her not so much her anger, but, but her fear. She was angry with him, but what drove that anger, I knew, was fear. She was really, really frightened of where he'd actually gone and nearly got to. And I think I was about 15, maybe 16. Uh, I was sitting talking to my father, and I asked him the question of why we were not to swim across on that side of the river. And what he told me was that at the Sandy further down, that he too, as a child, they were not allowed to swim on that section, so it was for him as well. And older Noongars that he knew that swam in the area. It was always a, a very much a taboo place, a bad place, a very bad place. And I explained to him also my feelings when I would think about it or even if we did look around and we'd swam out further than we thought but we'd swim back in. Um, the feelings of, of fear and, and a very strong uh, spiritual sense, a, a sickness. Uh, the hairs on the back of your neck would stand up. He then proceeded to tell me that years ago, in, in possibly his great-grandfather's time, uh, or my great-grandfather's time, sorry, it was his grandfather and my great-grandfather's time, so the late 1800s, that many Aboriginal people uh, were being tracked down, they were being sought after. Uh, once they died, their bodies were taken and uh, what he said was that their bones and their skulls were sent to other countries for science. and. He said it was scientific experiments. And he was told as a child not to swim in the same area because this is the area that white people, scientists, uh, people working with scientists and others would take Aboriginal bodies down to the river and uh, they, would, they would wash the flesh off the bones. So it's called deboning. And those bones were then taken back and sent overseas to be put into to museums and to be studied. He also said you you would remember when, when I told you about old people like his father, my grandfather, would often check uh, coffins when we, we had funerals. They'd take the lid off the coffins to check that there was actually a body in the coffin because there were occasions when there wasn't.
he talked about people living in fear so many people living in fear of his generation and of his, his father's generation, my grandfather and the generations before that and uh, many people feared dying uh, in hospital or near the hospitals because we weren't really permitted to go in hospitals in those days but certainly if you died then your body was taken to the hospital and uh, there was no trust there's no trust from Aboriginal people for me as a 15 or so year old I it, it really uh, affected me and the way I I feel to hand, I could handle that story was to say, well, it, it can't be true. And, and that's the take um, I had on it. I thought, no, well, this is, can't be true. I remember that day and, and life went on. I, I went off nursing. And it was actually whilst I was nursing that uh, the story came came back to me again and I remember uh, a young man dying outside of hospital in his house and the doctor who went to see his body did not know what it was that he died of and so the family came in and uh, the doctor, who, who was an old doctor, said to them, "Well, I, I have to, I have to do an autopsy." Um, and some of the old people did not really understand or know what the word autopsy meant, so it had to be explained to them. There was this fear, uh, anxiety, and some of the the old people begged, begged the doctor not to to cut the body up of their loved one and then it was explained more the reason to find out what, the, what they died of then they accepted that I saw people beg beg the doctors to make sure and promise them that that all the organs of their loved one would be put back into the body uh, please make sure that that the organs every organ goes back in so that we can bury uh, our grandson or our son as a whole human being and it was very emotional for me as it was for, for Noongar people because I knew where they were coming from I knew exactly where they were coming from and and what they feared because of the story that my father told me and there, there was that fear so through my nursing for, for many years I had to deal with that and um, a lot of the time I couldn't speak I couldn't speak to, to the, older, the older people or, or even the, the family members, the immediate family members about that I, I had to stay quiet and hold that in so to speak I had to hold it in and um, deal with it in my own in my own time and um, it really affected it affected my well-being um, it also affected my work so I learnt to deal with with these emotions and um, you know work out what to do